Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Obers here again, and this time uh, I'm going in real fast through the Japanese lines since uh, the uh, <clears throat> since the 5:15 uh, update uh, went live a couple of days ago, and I've had a chance. I've been playing uh, all the Japanese ships, uh, Japanese destroyers exclusively for the last two days just to really get a feel for them to see what's wrong with them what's right with them uh, you know to really look at uh, should we be as upset as we felt when we first heard about all these changes and overall I would say that um, yeah most of the Japanese destroyer players that have been upset by wargaming have had a ton of, of uh, uh, valid Complaints, you know, everything from the cost to uh, switch over captains to the various boats because they didn't, we didn't want to use the the boats that they had uh, that they put them in, and I think Wargaming could have done that a bit better. Um, along with uh, some of the unwarranted and unneeded nerfs and some of the things that did need to be changed. Now, I've actually been trying for the past 16 hours to make a video on this. And uh, so far, every time that I've tried to make uh, a video, the video, uh, the, all the footage has been over an hour's worth of footage. And uh, I just don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to cut down on everything. I'm trying to think of ways. How can I get my points across in the quickest way possible? And, and yet at the same time, I can't be detailed on every ship the way I would like to be. So let's start out with the boats that are, that are okay. That the boats that are all right, uh, they don't really need much of any discussion. So let's start out. Kagero, Tier 8. Basically, the Kagero is everything the Fubuki was at Tier 8. Uh, if you loved your Fubuki at, at Tier 8, um, the Kagero really plays pretty much the same as the Fubuki did. You've got decent torpedo speed uh, with a decent range. The range is okay. I know some people are complaining about the range. I'm actually going to say 10 kilometers is fine uh, with a 67 knot speed. Uh that's cool. Um, what are the problems with Kigero? Uh, the only, the only thing that I think they need to buff, and this goes for all of the Japanese destroyers from Tier Six to Tier Ten, because they all use the 127 millimeter slash 50 gun. Okay, uh, except for the Akazuki, which I don't have. Uh, yet the new Akazuki, the actual gunboat, it's really the only gunboat in what you would call the Japanese gunboat line. Uh, okay, the Akazuki I don't have, but she uses completely different guns. She uses 100 millimeter guns that are kind of similar to what's on the Mutsuki, uh, except they're in twin turrets. Uh, so I can't speak about the Akazuki, but uh, with regards to the 127 millimeter guns on all of these other Japanese ships, uh, I'm fine with uh, since they increased the uh, the uh, the rate of fire by lowering the reload time. Since they since they gave the buff to the reload time, uh, I think that's great. So I don't have a problem with them lowering the chance of a shell to cause a fire with HE shells. Uh, that's an understandable trade-off between the two. Uh, the thing I don't agree with with the 127 millimeter guns is the maximum HE shell damage nerf that they received with this update. Uh, I think Wargaming needs to bring back the original shell damage that uh, these guns uh, did. Because there seems to be another issue that's either a bug with the new update, or maybe war I'm hoping that the devs didn't do it deliberately. But one of the things I'm noticing is that even though I've uh, with an increased rate of fire, 
one thing I'm starting to notice now, both with AP shells and HE shells, is I'm getting less shells that are. Uh, I'm getting a lot more. What am I saying? I'm getting a lot more shells that are now hitting targets and not doing any damage. And this actually hurts the DPM even more when you think about it. So it almost makes it a nerf because. Yes, I, I don't expect HE shells to do any damage if they hit the belt armor of a battleship or a cruiser. I thoroughly understand that. What I am talking about here uh, primarily is that I am seeing, you know, definitely you see shells that do no damage when you're shooting at battleships and you're shooting at cruisers, uh, especially heavy cruisers. You expect it. But when you're shooting at other destroyers with HE, or you're shooting at uh, light cruisers uh, and you're doing less you're having shells hit them even on their decks and you're getting no damage no damage at all no fire and no damage uh, and it's happening more frequently since the update I mean I saw what I thought would be an, an acceptable level of that happening before the update but since the update it happens a lot more that shells are not doing any damage at all and like I say I don't know if it's a glitch or uh, uh, something wrong with the the programming or if it's uh, working as intended by the wargaming devs I don't know but I think that needs to be addressed and uh, again uh, HE shell damage I just want to stress it one more time please wargaming buff the HE shell damage of the 127 millimeter guns again. If you don't bring it back up to what it used to be, at least bring it back up to a reasonable level. Uh, other than that, uh, Kagero is is fine. You won't find much difference between playing her playing the Fubuki. Uh, okay, uh, moving on real quick. Yugumo. Yugumo. Uh, my only complaint with Yugumo is uh the uh, torpedo range eight kilometers i think that should be buffed uh and then i think the base torpedo should be buffed from 10 to 12. um i think if you did that along with the the gun the the he shell buff uh i think uh yugumo would be golden another issue with both kagero and yugumo uh, would be with the modules real fast um uh, for both of those ships, I would like to see them have an extra consumable slot or consumable box like uh, the Shiratsuyu, which we will get to in more depth in a little bit, uh, where so that uh, you can have not only the smoke generator, but also the torpedo reload booster with the 30 second reload time. So um, that's another thing right now you have to make a choice between the two and depending on how you choose uh, can either help or hurt the boat and I honestly feel right now with everything that's been given to battleship and cruiser players in terms of situational awareness for all captains uh, the uh, uh, Buffs to uh, turning uh, ability of battleships and cruisers, buffs to uh, their uh, rudder shift times, all of these other things. Uh, the big buff to the torpedo acquisition range, the range at which captains can acquire torpedoes, that they will spot en torpedoes from enemy uh, ships coming to towards them. Uh, all of these things that they that they have done given all of these tools that they've given battleship captains and cruiser captains and stuff uh, I think that honestly plus radar uh, also at the higher tiers um, that also uh, warrants that really uh, the boats like Kagero, Yagumo that that have uh, the currently you have to choose between a smoke generator or a torpedo reload booster I think they should get an extra uh, slot uh, like the Shiratsuyu does because I don't understand why sh uh, it's totally when we get into the Shiratsuyu I think I'm going to <coughs> I think I'm going to do a separate video simply because there's so much to go into with that boat that 
you know, I'm sitting there. It doesn't make sense. It, it just really doesn't. And I think the Shiratsuyu is one of the biggest reasons that my videos have gone. Uh, every time I've tried to make this video, it's just too much time spent. Okay, but let's get get over that. Other than that, okay, Yagumo. Uh, other than that, at Tier 9, the Yagumo's a, a decent boat. Um, again, like I say, I'm, I'm not going to complain about the speed. Of, I think the speed is perfect for the tier that the Yagumo is in. I just think that the range should be increased a little bit. Uh, Shimikaze, can't really say much. Uh, uh, there's nothing really bad about her with the exception of the uh, HE shell damage issue for the 127 millimeter guns, uh, which kind of slightly nerfs the Shimikaze. Uh, other than that, in terms of everything else, everything else works the way it worked before. The torpedoes have not changed uh, in any way, shape, or form since uh, they were nerfed a couple of patches back. Um, other than that, the Shimikaze plays the way she did, uh, the way she has for a long time now. Uh, so no issues there. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of working my way backwards <clears throat> through the fleet. Akatsuki. Not a bad boat. Um, at uh, tier 8 uh, or tier 7 I mean not a bad boat uh, she does not have the concealability uh, she doesn't have that Japanese conceal concealment uh, rating uh, she's closer now to uh, the allied ships uh, in fact the Sims and the Leningrad in the American and Russian line respectively uh, are only a tenth of a kilometer uh, higher in their concealment uh, uh, range than uh, the Akatsuki is. Uh, another issue to look at with the Japanese destroyers is um, the AA. And a lot of players have been complaining about this, and I'm going to agree with them in most cases. Here we are with the Akatsuki. She has the B model turrets which these are the turrets that were designed specifically for a uh, dual uh, purpose. Uh, as you can see, they, they have the ability that the guns could elevate to a higher arc to deal with um, dive bombers coming in at a high attack angle. Uh, also, the sighting equipment, the sighting port for the uh, gun sights, uh, allows for the sighting equipment to be used against uh, dive bombers, you know, planes coming in from a high angle of attack. And so why these guns have not been added to the Akatsuki's AA defense, I have no idea. Uh, going back to the Kagero, I can understand why uh, tip, uh, currently the uh, guns do not get added it's because uh, you do not see the B uh, turrets uh, being used on the Kagero here uh, these are the A turrets and uh, as such although the guns were dual purpose guns um, the uh, uh, they don't have they can't uh, be elevated enough to deal with high angle attack uh, aircraft uh, also the range uh, 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 opening for your sighting equipment uh, does not allow for uh, <clears throat> the sights to be used to deal with uh, planes attacking from a high angle of attack. So, understandable why Kagero does not currently have the main guns added to its uh, its defense, but uh, I would like to see Wargaming add an option to uh, update the guns uh, update the turrets at least to be dual purpose turrets I think that would be um, that's something they need to look at as we know the Shimikaze does add her guns to the uh, anti-air capability and as you can see she has uh, rather interesting turrets in that the guns can elevate. They they are the modified they they are the modified turrets allowing for uh, higher elevation of the guns. But yet 
the sighting equipment uh, opening, the the uh, uh, the little viewport for the uh, sighting equipment, however, is uh, still the older type that doesn't allow for sighting uh, uh, high angle uh, attack aircraft. So it makes me wonder. Um, were the guns uh, when they were used for uh, uh, AA defense? Um, who was tracking? Who was doing the sighting for those guns? Was it the guy in here, or was it the uh, people up here that uh, started uh, that took over uh, sighting the guns? So interesting question there as to uh, as to how that worked but you can you can see that these are the dual purpose gun turrets and that the they they have been modified to allow for a uh, higher elevation so there you go there all right but agasuki currently uh she has the proper gun turrets but they have not been added to aa defense in the meantime shiratsuyu also does not have her guns added to AA defense, and yet she also sports uh, gun turrets that are very similar to the Shimakazes. Uh, they allow for uh, the guns to be elevated to a higher angle, but again, the uh, the uh, uh, sighting uh, aperture uh, does not allow for the sighting uh, equipment to uh, come up enough. So maybe that's why Shiratsuyu also does not get her guns added to uh, the AA defense. Uh, <clears throat> whatever. Um, we're going to talk more about the Shiratsuyu. I'm going to actually make a second video for the Shiratsuyu. She just, uh, it, it, there's just too much going on there. But again, uh, what are the issues with uh, the Tier 7 boats? Um, well, between the gunboat and the uh, and the torpedo boat, there is no difference in the uh, reload rate or the 180 degree turning circle time of uh, of the guns between the Akatsuki or the Shiratsuyu. So go figure. Um, you know why they're calling the Shiratsuyu a gunboat? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, torpedo range, or torpedo. The torpedo range is fine uh, with both of these boats at tier seven. Just to go over the tier sevens quickly, uh, the issue with the tier sevens, of course, is still the uh, HE shell damage from the guns, um, and then you've got the torpedo speed, and the torpedo speed is the big problem with the tier sevens. Uh, it, it should be higher uh, in order for these boats to be effective. Now the sad thing is is that the Shiratsuyu can be effective with these 62 knot compete torpedoes. I guess I'm going to talk about the Shiratsuyu anyway. And primary issue for that is the reload booster on this boat, which this ship gets not a 30 second uh, not a re reduction time to 30 seconds to reload the torpedoes. It gets a reduction down to 5 seconds, which I don't get it. Why would you do that? Um, I mean, yeah, it's great for me. It, and it does make the boat effective. Um, <laughs> it does make the boat uh, effective uh, with these uh, slower torpedoes. Um, is it OP? I'm sure that some battleship players are going to say so because you are going to hear the low tier players screaming. Now, the way the high-tier battleship and cruiser players screamed at Tier 9 and 10 about torpedo spam and torpedo walls. Because this ship can sure as hell put out a torpedo wall. Uh, with the 5-second reload, that means that you can have... You can fire a salvo of 8 torpedoes, and 5 seconds later, you can have another 8 torpedoes in the water for 16 torpedoes. So, uh, I mean... Okay, which ship puts out the torpedo wall now between Shimakaze and this boat? Um, so I don't get it. Uh, I, I don't understand what, what Wargaming was doing here. Maybe they were trying to appease us all for the huge nerfs to some of the other ships we're going to be talking about. But <clears throat> that's what they did. So 
the Shiritsuyu right now is... <coughs> Excuse me. My sinus is just going nuts this time of year. But the Shiritsuyu is definitely the boat, uh, the best boat to come out of the new line. Um, she's definitely worth getting. Um, honestly, I think you're going to see her nerfed in about a month or two. Um, not her in and of herself, but you're going to see this nerfed. This will be nerfed, the Torpedo Reload Booster. Um, I think too many people are going to be crying over this. And uh, so you're going to see it get nerfed, whether whether Wargaming makes any changes that I would like or not. Now, I have no trouble with Wargaming nerfing this to 30 seconds. If they increase the speed of the torpedoes to 67 knots. If this boat had 60, 67 kilometer, or 67 knot torpedoes with a 10 knot range, um, that'd be, she'd be a damn decent boat. Um, and I would have no issues with Wargaming in exchange for that, nerfing this to 30 seconds. Because finally the torpedoes would be effective. But currently, a 62 knot speed at uh, tier 7 is inadequate because of the ships that you're up against. And with all, again, like I say, all the things that battleship players and cruiser players have been given, all the tools and buffs that have been given to battleships and cruisers these days, and the captains, uh, the, uh, that that speed just doesn't cut it 62 knot speed at tier at tier 7 is no it just doesn't it doesn't work it's too easy to evade case in point I consider myself a good uh, destroyer player uh, you look at my stats I'm, I'm at 55 per, I got a 55 percent win rate uh, and I primarily play destroyers however I had one game where I was up against a very good team uh, of battleship and cruiser players that they were all very situationally aware of what was going on around them at all times. And I could not land torpedoes. These guys were constantly changing course, changing heading. They were keeping themselves very random. They were using their WASD keys very effectively. I did get eight torpedo hits that game. I With this boat, with the Shiritsuyu, I got eight torpedo hits in that game. I sank three ships in that game. And unfortunately, the video was screwy. It was before uh, Aslan's um, mod pack was updated for this uh, update. And uh, there was something wrong with the um, replay feature. It was very, very buggy. So unfortunately, I don't have the replay to show you. But... Uh, I may have the pictures, I don't know, of the end screens. But in that game, I did get eight torpedo hits. I sank three ships. Uh, but before you get all jazz going, well, hey, that, that proves this ship is overpowered. Um, it took me shooting 88 torpedoes in that game to uh, get those eight hits. So, yeah. Out of 88 shots, torpedo, uh, torpe out of 88 torpedoes launched in that game with this boat, and we're talking salvos of eight torpedoes at a time. Out of 88 torpedoes launched, uh, 80 of them—that's an eight and a zero, folks—missed their target. Uh, either the enemy evaded them, or you know they they just lucked out one way or another. Uh, but yeah, uh, 88 torpedoes to get eight hits. <clears throat> so before you start saying that the Shiritsuyu is overpowered, um, no, against a good battleship captain, a good battleship or cruiser captain can still evade every torpedo. Not a problem. Or most of the torpedoes, most of them, uh, even from this thing. So... There you go. So, like I say, if, if Wargaming were to buff the torpedoes, I think, honestly, a good thing, uh, a good way to balance this ship would be buff the torpedo speed, nerf the amount of time, uh, uh, add to the time 
for um, torpedoes to reload. Make this a 30, 30 second reload. Um, I think that would be better. Um, and as I said earlier, I think that an extra box should be added to Gagaro and Yugumo so that just like the Shiratsuyu, uh, they can also have both uh, the smoke and the uh, and the torpedo reload boost. So that's where I go with the shirt. So you, um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video with this boat, and I'm going to start a part two where I'm going to discuss the final, uh, uh, let's call it the final five uh, of the uh, Japanese uh, destroyer line. And um, then I can go more in depth into the major, where we get into the meat of the uh, of the problem here that Japanese destroyer captains are having over the changes to the destroyer line. Overall, these boats from tier seven on up are pretty decent destroyers. I I, I have changed my opinion a little bit. They're not. They're not bad. They're not performing as well as uh, the line used to perform uh, before this update. In terms of from tier uh, from tier six through, uh, I would say tier eight, uh, tier nine and tier ten, pretty much the there is there's not a, a huge difference in their performance. Um, at those tiers, but uh, from tier eight down, uh, like Kagero, is it a good boat? It, yes, it, it definitely has the feel of the old Fubuki at tier eight, but it doesn't perform quite as well as uh, Fubuki did at tier eight. Um, Akatsuki and Shiratsuyu are kind of, you know, that I would say. I would say they, in a sense, they perform better than Hatsuharu did at Tier 7. But that's not a hard thing to do when Hatsuharu only had two gun turrets at Tier 7. Whereas at least Shiratsuyu here gets to keep her uh, third little gun turret here, single gun turret, which that extra gun makes a difference. Having that extra, that fifth gun, definitely makes a difference over having just two turrets with two guns each. Um, and then, of course, too, Akatsuki, of course, can make a big difference because she's got all six of her guns. So, yes, of course, at Tier 7, I would say um, it's an improvement over what we did have at Tier 7. But that's not a hard thing to achieve when we're talking, comparing these two new boats to the Hatsuharu, which really hasn't changed at uh, from from tier six to tier seven. And in actuality, the 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 Hatsuharu did receive some buffs. But anyway, okay, let me end this, and we'll we'll discuss the rest of these. As usual, I get sidetracked on things, and. Uh, Hey, that that just has to go with age. I've I've uh, I've most probably forgotten more than a lot of you guys know at 57 years of age. But uh, here we go. So anyway, thank you for watching this. I'll uh, I'll put this one up and then I'll start working on uh, part two. Thanks again. Take care, guys. <laughs> Und sterben, so kam mir doch auch für sie die Zeit. Torpedo ein Schlag, Turbinen aus Wall, Angst in den Augen der Matrosen. Auf einem Seemannskrat blühen keine Rosen.
ihren Namen in Erinnerung mit Ehrfurcht und Respekt. Sie gaben ihr junges Leben für ihr Land, jämmerlich ersoffen und verdeckt. Jung und stolz auf ihrem mächtigen Schiff, und so starben diese Matrosen auf einem Seemannsgrad, blühen keine Rosen. Und es tönen die Geschütze Feuer aus allen Rohren und die Wellen sie tosen. Auf einem Seemannsgrad blühen keine Rosen. 